<laughs> I'm I fine. Don't. Thanks. Thanks for the interview. Cesar is going to translate me because my my English is not very very good. Okay. It's it's all good. It's what we're all here for, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first off, I want to say uh, thank you, Alberto, Alberto, for for taking this time to do this interview with me. Uh, so many questions on the table that I've been wanting to ask you since <laughs> I, after watching this. <laughs> okay, let's start. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Um, I guess the first thing, uh, what what was the idea? Like, what drove you to want to create this movie? Not only you know have it animated, but direct and you know write the screenplay for it. Okay, Cesar, podías traducirme un poquito la pregunta? Sí, 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 sí. ¿Qué qué te ha llevado a, a hacer esta esta este proyecto? Que cuál sí. fue la idea original, pero además vale, por qué sí. este estilo de animación también. Bueno, pues eh, esta película parte de un cómic que yo dibujé un cómic corto allá por el año 2009. En el año 2013 fue un cortometraje llamado Sangre de Unicornio. Decidí llevarla al cortometraje y contaba la historia de dos ositos que iban a cazar unicornios. Y en el año 2016 eh, me salió la, esta oportunidad de, de presentar un guión para hacer una, un largometraje y entonces decidí expandir este universo del cortometraje, hacer más personajes, más tramas y para ello decidí mezclar el universo del cortometraje con el género bélico y con una historia mitológica y épica y mística, ¿no? Pues si quieres traducir esto... Lo último esto, que has dicho, perdón. El, eh, épica género bélico y... y... Eh, género bélico y, ¿no? y una historia épica y mitológica. Vete traduciendo esto y luego continuamos, si quieres. Ok. So, Terrell, yeah. So, um, it always started with a movie uh, from a short comic back in 2009. Then in 2013, uh, he directed, he created Blood Unicorn, which is the story of two teddy bears uh, that they go to hunt unicorns. Uh, in 2016, he was approached and he came up with, with this story, with this script to tell a bigger story, uh, including developing uh, further uh, characters, the universe, the world, right? And then trying to bring together the universe of that short film with the war genre and epic genre and mythological genre as well. He created to blend all of those. Sí, por eso siempre definimos esta historia como pues eso, pues un cruce entre Apocalypse Now, Bambi y la Biblia. So the, that's why they always say this story is a blend between Apocalypse Now, Bambi and the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and do you want to talk ab uh, about more things about animation or or about what? In, that was me, right? In this question. Me. Yes, yes. In this question, <laughs> sorry. Terry. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. To, uh, why why was the choice made? I mean, obviously you you've done a previous project before, but I was curious as to why the choice was made to have teddy bears and unicorns in this particular story. And I, and I feel okay. like it kind of went over my head of what they might have represented. Uh, I was kind of hoping to get a little bit more information on that. Okay. Bueno, eh, la idea de trabajar con, con osos y unicornios es porque son iconos de nuestra, de nuestra infancia. Son, todo el mundo sabe quiénes son los, los ositos y quiénes son los unicornios. Y, y estos personajes pues, no tienen ni un tiempo ni un lugar definido, sino que, sino que son universales. Traduce esto, por fin. Sí, sí, no... sí. Bueno, well, la idea es porque estos personajes, los teddy bears, los unicorns, son are, they are icons de nuestra childhood. Son personajes universales que todos los que son también, y todos los que pueden can reconocer. Them. Estos personajes pues, eh, pertenecen un poco a la historia de la animación, a la historia de las fábulas o a la historia del cómic. Y, y me gusta eh, que estos iconos, bueno, romper estos, estos iconos, ser iconoclastas, 
y porque los espectadores sufren con ellos, ¿no? porque, porque les, les recuerda a, 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 sus, a, a los, a los cómics y a los libros que leían de pequeños y me gusta hacer sufrir a estos personajes porque, lo, porque los espectadores tienen una, una empatía con ellos. ¿no? Um, and also, um... Yeah, so because these characters they belong to history, to history of animation, to history of comic, and, and there were. Y había y otra tercer cosa que sí, a, a, la, a la historia de, de las fábulas, a la and fables, fables, and fables. Uh, so he liked to break, to get these icons, to break them, because the audience um, are gonna suffer because they relate to these icons from their childhood or other memories and he likes to provoke that discomfort in the audience. The uh, the, tra the trailers for this movie are intentionally misleading about what you're going to get. Um, and, you know, after, after watching this, I, I, it took me a while to kind of settle into getting back to sleep because it was a lot of scenes in this movie which just was just a little too much, even though it was like cartoon and animated form. What was kind of the the limit of where you guys could go as far as like the brutality and like the deaths in the movie? Okay, me puedes traducir por fin un poquito, César. Sí, eh, a ver, eh, dice que eh, el, el tráiler como que no le no entendía bien de qué iba la película, pero que luego tras verla que le costaba dormir por todas las cosas y temáticas eh, que había en sí. ella. Entonces, ¿qué dónde ves? Eh, los puntos principales de, de la película, ¿no? Hmm, ¿Dónde veo los puntos principales? O sea... La, la, eh... Sí, los temas principales, las temáticas, etc. Sí, bueno, esta película, digamos que habla sobre el origen común de... Yo quería hablar del origen común de todas las guerras. Digamos que los ositos viven en una sociedad muy militarizada y muy religiosa y controlan la opinión pública y tienen su propia Biblia y consideran al unicornio un enemigo y me parecía muy interesante este, este tema ¿no? del fanatismo y era algo de lo que quería hablar traduce y luego sigo sí sí uh, well he's really passionate about for this story about the or uh, the common origin of all wars And if we go to the teddy bears, we can see how they are all militarized, they are religious, they even have their own Bible and their own legends, right? And at the core of it, it's about fanatism, like radicalism right. as well. Sí. Um, yo creo que esta película va sobre el... Es una película sobre el odio. Sobre el odio hacia el diferente en este caso los osos odian a los unicornios, pero también sobre el odio hacia los iguales, ¿no? hacia, las, hacia la guerra familiar. ¿no? Hay una guerra externa y hay una guerra interna, que es la guerra de los dos de los, los ositos por el amor de su madre. ¿no? Los ositos se hacen bullying completa, eh, todo el rato. ¿no? Y también hay una reflexión sobre cuál es el origen del mal. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this movie is about hate, but it, in so many different levels. We can see, uh, uh, for example, the war against the different teddy bears, against the unicorns, but also against the equals, like the two teddy, like the bears, the two teddy bears, the two siblings. Uh, there is an internal war and there is an external war. There is an internal war between the two teddy bears, the siblings. Uh, bullying each other, fighting for the love of their mother, but there's also external war between the teddy bears against the unicorns. And also a very important aspect for him is where is the origin of evil. Sí, y bueno, hay otros temas secundarios, pero importantes, como puede ser la, también la ecología, ¿no? Eh, la, la importancia de la, de la naturaleza, que la lucha entre hombre y naturaleza, ¿no? En este caso los los ositos representan al hombre claramente y, y los unicornios a la naturaleza. Que es, su, su labor es sanar la naturaleza. 
There are also secondary things, but it's still very important, which is uh, related to ecology, like men against nature. The teddy bears, they represent men and nature is represented by these wonderful creatures, the unicorns. Yeah, Def, Def definitely was was picking that up uh, as, as I was watching it, you know, after, after I got past some of the nightmare fuel. Uh, <laughs> um, this is also another uh, movie that you've had a, a hand of directing to. Um, what, are, what are some subtle changes as like a, a, the director that most people wouldn't have picked up that you might have had a hand in with this project? César, ¿puedes traducirme, por favor? Yeah, excuse me. Uh, so you're talking about, uh, could you repeat that, please? Yeah, I was, I was saying, like, what you coming into this, this project as a director, what are some inputs on in the movie? What changes have you made to this versus, you know, your, the previous Unicorn project that came into this that you, you know, that you came in, that you brought in as a director for this movie? Okay, que como director para esta película, ¿Qué, ¿Qué cambios has hecho respecto a cómo te lo has tomado con otros eh, proyectos anteriores? Vale. Bueno, eh, el mayor cambio que hemos tenido con la anterior película, Bird Boy, que se llamaba Bird Boy de Forgotten Children, ha sido que hemos tenido más presupuesto, más medios. Entonces, bueno, seguimos siendo una película pequeña, pero he podido dejar de asumir una carga de trabajo enorme que, que tenía antes, ¿no? Sigo teniendo mucha carga de trabajo, pero, pero menos. Traduce esto y luego se, y seguimos. Ok. So, for example, the biggest change he observed regarding his previous project, Bird Boy, uh, it's that since they had a bigger budget, even though they are still independent filmmakers, it's an indie movie, in, in the animation movie, right? but he didn't have the big load of work that he needed to have in his previous project. So now he could delegate more. Okay. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I'm always curious about the, the, other, the, the other side of the, the film, the camera, like, you know, what the different roles is when it comes to animation. Um, what are, I, I guess, I mean, this, this world is, is so big too. And we, we see how it, it ends, like you said, with the, the origin of evil and, you know, wh where it comes from. Is there any plans to kind of expand this world and kind of do other stories around after the, the ending of this story? Okay, Cesar, ¿puedes decir, por fin? Eh, dice que, que eh, el origen del mal y que cómo acaba la película, que si hay más planes de seguir desarrollando y creando otras historias a partir de ahí. No, 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 no. Yo creo que la, la, la película tiene un final muy final, es decir, muy metafórico, muy alegórico y completamente cerrado, ¿no? El final no tiene nada que ver con, con la película, o sea, es como, es como un epílogo. Más bien, ¿no? Es como un epílogo de lo que vendrá a partir de ahora, ¿no? Una vez que toda esa destrucción se ha, se ha llevado a cabo, ¿no? Y, y no, no, no. Estoy ya trabajando en, en, en otra película, pero no voy a hacer... Uni oh, te, te he perdido. ¿Me, me, ¿Me has escuchado? Se te ha cortado el micro. Sí, sí, que, ah. que, que, que estoy trabajando en otra película y que que esto ya está muy cerrado, ¿no? Que tiene que esta película al final es como una fábula o como una antifábula, ¿no? Que al final tiene como una bueno una moral una moraleja lo que se llama, ¿no? Una, una especie de, de mensaje moral o más bien una antimoraleja porque es muy destructivo todo. So no, Daryl. <laughs> He... Uh, the movie, as he says, uh, he, it has an ending end. Mm. So there is a metaphorical and allegorical ending. Um, and the ending itself, it's an anti-fable with a, also a moral message that brings all the... Because now we see that the destruction has started and where it's going to lead, right? Um, and also he already started another project already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me rest, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, is is uh, any insight on that next project? Is it going to be a little bit more kid friendly? Next one, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Can I, can I show this to a five year old? Like... No, bueno, en este último, siguiente proyecto, eh, quiero cambiar un poco el tono y va a ser una, una película que es, va a ser una comedia, pero bueno, una comedia negra, con humor negro y con un poco de, con, con mala leche, ¿no? También con, un signific con, con, con algo social, ¿no? Porque yo, aunque trabajo desde la fantasía, pues lo hago para hablar de temas actuales y contemporáneos. Puedes traducir. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, but no, because it's gonna, his next project, yes, it's going to have a different tone, but, and it's going to be a comedy, but it's going to be this kind of dark comedy with also social elements um, that, because he likes to portray what he sees. Like, so he has contemporary elements, And it's about nowadays. Right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, last last question. Um, you know, big big shout out to, you know, having the the movie, you know, in its original language, which, you know, you know, Spanish, you know, and you know, you don't really see a lot of animated projects in Spanish at all. See the English, Japanese, or you know, Chinese or anything like that. You, you don't really get a lot of Spanish uh, you know, uh, language projects. So Uh, what I'm guessing you had a lot of push to make sure that this project was done originally and, and you know, in its original language. Ok, ¿me puedes traducir el final, por fin, César? Eh, sí, que si sí, notaste que si alguien te empujaba a que se creara en otro lenguaje distinto al lenguaje original. En algún no, porque, no porque yo solo puedo entender mi propio idioma, el humor y las, la, la manera de pensar, ¿no? Después la película se ha traducido a varios idiomas, al francés, al gallego, al vasco, que son idiomas de España, ¿sabes? Supongo que no lo sabrá. Y, mm. y, y también se va a traducir al inglés, probablemente, con, con G-Kids. Pero el lenguaje original siempre tienes que trabajar con lo que tú entiendes, porque si no, el humor es difícil sí. de... De, de captar ¿no? y de, de entender. Yo no sabría dirigir un doblaje en, en otro idioma. Es un buen punto. So he always contemplated to do it in Spanish since it's his original language, but also because it's his own humor, his own language, but also his own way of thinking. So he couldn't really direct another dubbing in another language. So it could be because it could be something else. It could become something else. And also in Spain, we have different languages. Like for example, where Alberto lives uh, is Galician because they're in, in Galicia. Uh, and also they collaborated with the Basque country where they speak the Basque. And then also in France, they have, well, France, you know, yeah. <laughs> but also in Spain, they need to translate it to several languages because we speak several languages as well. Okay, that's, that's a lot of languages in one country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's lot. true. It's, <laughs> that's it's a, weird, I know. <laughs> that's, that's, a big, that's a big task, like I said, just to make sure that, you know, everybody can enjoy the project. Like I said, I I, I was I watched it in its original language. Um, I didn't even know there was even an English dub on the table until like months after the fact. So, you know, say, like I said, it, it, it was a really good movie. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I said, I've been recommended to everybody uh, more Thank so you, for the, the, the shock factor of it, but just like, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it, it is a message there um, and not that everybody's going to get it, but it's, 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 it's definitely an important message. Like you said, of, you know, how, how to, you know, just how to treat people and, you know, the, the good versus evil story And you know, you know how you, you know how you treat your family and stuff like that. You know who 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 is your family at the end of the day, regardless of everything. So, like I said, good 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 movie. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, and I can't hope to hopefully get some some DVD, some Blu-ray distribution, so we can, <laughs> we, can, we can watch that. So again, so thank you again, Alberto, for 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 doing this interview with us. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Terrell. Thank you for the interview, and and thank you for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the nightmares, Arbelto. I really appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> see you. Okay, see you, Terrell. Bye, bye, Terrell. Bueno.